<laughs> All right. Okay. So thanks. Um, thanks a lot for the for the invitation. I'm, I'm happy to give a presentation for your for your group and and get feedback possibly on on this work that we've been doing in essentially in the last couple of years in Geneva since I started my postdoc there. So my collaborators for these projects are uh, mainly Michael Sonner, who is a PhD student in our group, and and Dimitri Banin. And more recently, Julian Tonis uh, also joined our efforts. Okay, so as you will see, the discussion is very much open-ended. So any any feedback and criticism from from your side is most welcome. Okay, so let me start with a brief introduction. So we're this project in general. We are interested in uh, evolution of quantum many-body systems out of equilibrium. So we're we're interested in uh, considering. Well, let me just consider a simple example. So I, I, I consider a quantum spin chain initialized in some uncorrelated state. So some, some simple state where all the spins are polarized in, the, in a given direction, for example. And then I want to consider its time evolution governed by some, by some Hamiltonian. OK, so in the course of time evolution, as you know very well, the, the, the many body wave function of the system will become increasingly massively correlated over larger and larger scales. And this becomes a more, a more, more and more difficult object to treat. But typically, we're interested in something simple that, that occurs uh, on, on larger space and time scales. You know? So if we focus our attention, as we typically do, for example, in experiments on local, local regions, so we consider a subsystem that we call S, then here something seemingly simple happens. You know? So if we monitor the evolution of local observables, this will approach some, some sort of uh, after some transient, it will approach some, some stationary behavior that usually, at least we believe it's most, uh, most of the cases, it's compatible with the predictions of statistical, statistical physics, right? So it's, it's only determined, it's, it's compatible with, the, 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 with a thermal state on, uh, um, decided only by the initial energy, okay? At least that, that's, that's the behavior that is believed to be, to be the generic behavior for, for interacting systems that have no no further conservation loss apart from energy. Okay, and this this behavior is what we usually refer to as thermalizing systems. So it's uh, common phrasing of this behavior is that these systems are able to provide a thermal bath for their own for their own parts for their own subregions. Okay, and on the other hand, it's uh, it's very interesting to understand the limitations of this this kind of um, phenomenology. So it's it's interesting to understand systems that fail to behave as a good thermal bath for themselves. So as they say, break ergodicity, and and this and this is very nice because it's it realize it allows us to circumvent the constraints of statistical mechanics and realize phases of matter that are not possible in equilibrium. And people have been discovering in recent years a lot of a whole zoo of phenomenology of uh, uh, behaviors that are kind of intermediate, so behaviors that are occur on a parametrically large scale before eventual thermalization. Okay, so this is the general setting. And of course, so this is the kind of problems that we're interested in ultimately in describing. And this is, but the, achieving a description of this is a tough problem, right? Because as, as, I, as I hinted, the, the, the problem of describing the time evolution of, of a quantum state, of a quantum many body state uh, requires generally an exponentially growing number of parameters. So people have been, over the years, have been discovering, have been appro uh, applying several approaches to the problem. To this problem, each one comes with its own limitations, but each one, each, each one sheds some lights on certain aspects of the problem. Now, what I'm going to do in the, in this talk essentially is to, uh, what I want to do is to take essentially literally this um, idea of a system acting as a buff for itself and try to turn this into a formal tool to analyze, to analyze quantum dynamics. Okay, so as I, as I was describing, this is, this is a tough problem because of the essentially because of um, the growth of Hilbert space dimension with, uh, with, the, with the size of the system, which grows exponentially, and because of the growth of quantum correlations. So ultimately, because of the growth of entanglement out of equilibrium, which limits our ability to efficiently encode the quantum state, for example, with tensor network methods. Okay, so in principle, the, the problem we want to uh, solve is simple. So we want to uh, up the, monitor the evolution of a local reduced density matrix uh, of the system, right? But the naive, the naive idea to do this is just to update the state of the system in time, right? And then trace 
gets over the degrees of freedom out of our selected degrees of freedom, say out of our local region, and, and compute our local evolution, right? So that's 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 in principle the the program. But this this is uh, naive, as I said, because the monitoring the full many body state in time is something that, that is very hard in general. <laughs> can, can I ask a meta question and a question? The meta question will not surprise anyone. The meta question is: Can we ask questions? <laughs> Along sure, the way, sure. or do you want questions at the end? Absolutely, um, no, no, please, please. Okay, please. Um, and yeah, if the answer is yes, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, well, it seems likely that you come back to this, but um, I mean, you might be aware of the fact that there are some like tensor network methods that that are slightly more resource efficient and have like mild shortcuts when you want to compute local observables mm -hmm. compared to keeping track of the entire system. Like, yes, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, and so on, so on, but I'm sure you come to that. Like yes, yes, yes. Look at shortcuts okay. when you look at local observables, right? That's exactly, exactly. So the, the idea uh, I was precisely going to mention mention this possibility. Essentially, the idea. Is, so the, the naive idea, as I was describing, is, is clearly naive. No? So, so okay, it, wonderful. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you. Perfect. Okay, so you, you you try to monitor local evolution just by uh, updating the state in time, yeah. but that's yeah. that's kind of uh, resource inefficient, right? Because it's uh, you you try to keep track of the full many body state, so of the full all possible mm -hmm. many body correlations over over uh, all possible scales at, at time t, and then we try to eliminate them, right? But this is uh, so we, uh, in principle this contrasts with the fact that the the ex expected emergent behavior over large space and time scales. Is something that is considered to be well, at least in general, it's considered to be something simple, right? So, time, time evolution over large space and time scales is expected to be described by some kind of uh, emergent uh, hydrodynamic picture, so some some effective classical equation governing governing the evolution. So, the, the problem is to bridge the uh, the so to, to contrast the apparent difficulty of time evolving a complex object, which is psi of t, compared to the, the expected simple evolution of this local local reduced density matrix, and this is uh, the, the breaking down the problem. Essentially, we realize that the, the problem is that um, the, the 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 massive entanglement that that, that is uh, described by the time evolving wave function essentially amounts to building um, only some kind of buff for the system, right? That, that's that's the idea. So the we don't we don't really have to describe the full long range correlations. Th this is this it just becomes equivalent to some kind some kind of classical statistical entropy in the time evolved state. Okay, so we we the people have been uh, as you mentioned people have been trying to circumvent this problem that is sometimes called the, the exponential wall or the or the entanglement barrier of quantum many body dynamics trying to to come up with smarter uh, smarter ideas how to eliminate well how to avoid this unnecessary complication and uh, and try to focus on the relevant degrees of freedom and the, the relevant information. And there have been several attempts in the last uh, in the last years. So I, I haven't cited them here, but th there is a, se a series of attempts to compute time evolution of local observables circumventing this entanglement uh, barrier. Okay, so what I'm going to do what I'm going to do in this uh, talk is the following. So I am going to I'm trying to switch uh, perspective and take an open quantum system viewpoint. So instead of computing the time evolving full many body wave function. What I'm trying to do is instead is focusing on a on a local region and describe it, its evolution as some kind of open quantum system. So trying to describe the full the, the, the all the other degrees of freedom as some kind of bath. So as I mentioned at the beginning, no? I want to take seriously this idea of system acting as a bath for itself and, and computing the, the evolution of uh, of the relevant degrees of freedom, so local observables, uh, using this this kind of open quantum system description. And now the, the idea. Um, um well the, the idea essentially the, the general tool i need for this this kind of description is the so-called uh influence functional uh, that was introduced by Feynman and Berman. this is just a, a framework to describe a general and arbitrary uh system interacting with a um, with an environment okay so let me just briefly remind you what this is so this was um this was done i think i think it was um vernon's phd thesis under supervision of Feynman back well, several years ago, back in the 60s. And essentially, well, as I said, this is formalism to describe an arbitrary quantum bath acting, influencing the evolution of a system. And I think the most uh, celebrated application of this formalism is, is in this famous um, dissipative two-state problem uh, studied by Leggett and, and co-workers, where essentially they, they studied 
the influence of a, of a quantum environment uh, on, a, on quantum tunneling, so on, a, on the jumps, the quantum jumps between uh, states of a two-level system. And here, the environment was described as a in linear response, in linear response theory, as some kind of ensemble of thermal harmonic oscillators. Okay, so let me let me uh, let, let's let's see how it works. So essentially, imagine you want to let's take let's, let's consider this uh, legged uh, problem, and imagine you want to monitor uh, the evolution of some observables pertaining only to the system S, which in this case is this two-level system. Okay, so imagine, for example, I want to compute these two-body this uh, temporal correlations in the system, some some sigma z sigma z correlation in time. Okay, that's the object that you find in the bottom part of the slide. Then, okay, of course, this is formalism introduced by Feynman. So what, what you do, you um, expand this object, this number into, as a path integral. So as a summation over all histories of the system and of the environment. So of, uh, of the two level system and of the oscillator. And this is a dynamical path integral. So it's, it's a Keldish path integral. So we have two families of trajectories conventionally called forward and backward in time, which refer uh, arise from the bra and the cat components of time evolution. Now the trick is the following: essentially, we, we we write this full path integral over system and environment, and then we perform the summation over the environment trajectories, okay, formally, and and that's that results in a functional of of the of the system trajectory. So in this case, a functional of the trajectory sigma of tau and sigma bar of tau that describe the evolution of the of the two level system. So an example of trajectories you see in the right in the right part. I, I don't know if you see my curse i think you don't see my mouse right so okay no i don't but uh, it's very clear anyway but okay, um, okay, great. so the, 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 i can't see but never mind per perfect okay so yeah i think there is a way of uh, using a laser pointer but okay you know, let's let's just uh, forget about it so uh, yes so um, this is an example of trajectories and and then the the functional arising from summing over the trajectories of the environments in, which i call here x uh, and x bar results in a, in a function that is generally non-local in time. And this is an exact description, if you wish, of the non-Markovianity of the environment uh, induced, in, induced on, the, on the evolution of your, of your two-level system described by this uh, local time-local action that I call S, S uh, subscript S. So Sorry, imagine- Can I, can I ask a, a quick please. question? Sorry. Um, is, is there any assumption like on the, like on the dynamics between the system and the bus, it's like assumed to be limblad or no, 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 absolutely. No, that, that's the point. So this is this is a framework uh, designed to to deal with a general with an arbitrary bath. So it, oh. there is no assumption. Well, if you wish, there is an assumption here which can be lifted. Uh, the, the, the assumption is that the initial state is also factorized between system and environment. And so yeah, it, and this and can be can be remedied. Uh, I will I will mention maybe later. But uh, but yeah, in this say bare Feynman formalism, the only assumption is that the initial state of S and E is factorized. And Such that we can, we can eliminate, we can perform the integration over the bath degrees of freedom and obtain just a path integral over the system trajectories, please. And how, how can you define the trajectory? Like in for general, I mean, like in the case of a Limblad, I, I guess you use the quantum job, the, the unraveling, right? Uh -huh. Like oh, a... Right, right. No, no, this is just, uh, this is just, um, you take the, the time evolution operator, U of T, right? That evolves your spin and your harmonic mm -hmm. oscillators in this case. And you just uh, expand. So imagine you break it down into many, several infinitesimal steps, right? In the usual trotterization, if you wish. I, I will, I will do this later. But I see. I see. You and, and you your do time the time reversal trajectory you, you, this way, right? Yeah, yeah. So you have u and u bar, right? Because uh -huh. it's uh, it's um, you're computing an expectation value of some observables. Now both u and u bar, uh, sorry, u and u dagger, you break it down into you know, several infinitesimal steps, and you insert resolution of identity between between the steps and then you, you get a summation overall uh, space and time configuration of your of your many body system. I see. That, that's and your path integral. Now, okay. uh, I mean, uh, when you do it, uh, for example, for a system of fermions or bosons, then you get the usual, the usual textbook uh, path integral that, well, that Feynman introduced, but you can do it for an arbitrary, for an arbitrary system, for example, for the spin, and you get a summation over this trajectory sigma and sigma bar that I, that I have here on the slide. Okay, so it's okay. just the bare the bare path integral that we learn in, uh, in our undergrad, okay? But it's just Keldish. So it, it, uh, there are two families of trajectories uh, forward, one arising from U and one arising from U dagger. 
yeah. that we and usually that, have. Uh, that you have that I mean you assume as you said maybe you you will you said that you comment after mm -hmm. the, the fact that you uh, start from a factorized initial state mm -hmm. uh, when you do the backward trajectory uh, mm -hmm. do you kind of have to assume that you also start at the end point with a with a factorized state or you know or mm -hmm. it's like a, because I mean the the, the, the reverse trajectory Factory can be defined in several ways, and this affects how the definition of like the entropy production, the fluctuation relation, and so on. So I was wondering, like, when you do the backward trajectory, mm -hmm. you are just reversing the evolution, but keeping a different initial point, or yeah, no, well, no, here I'm really, I'm really doing nothing, nothing really fancy. So I'm just, I'm literally breaking down the the evolution operator in right. several. Ways several steps in, and I do it in the same way on the forward branch and on the backward branch. So I just obtain a double sum over two right, right. factors and that's that's it. Um, yeah, I was just wondering like I'm not assuming you, anything that that's, if yeah. you if you start so if you start the backward trajectory from a point which is different from the end point you, you ended up with an evolution. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be a different I mean a different trajectory, right? Yes, so I mean it's yeah, a, yeah. but I have to sum over all of them. You have to sum over all of them. Yes. Okay. That's, I see. That's, that's what uh, that's what the that's what the initial object is. Like, I see. Uh, it's I a see. summation of all trajectory. Thank you. And then, but it, maybe maybe it's important to stress uh, following your question. Uh, so you see, when I sum when I compute this inference function, I have to trace out the environment. So I sum over all the trajectories of the environment, including the initial state and including the final state. So I just I really want to eliminate the environment from the problem. And obtain just a reduced path integral for for my spin, with, with some additional weight arising from the processes happening in the environment. No? And that's what this i of sigma sigma bar is. But it's important that I sum also over over the initial and the final state of the environment. So when I take the trace of the environment, I, this corresponds to taking the endpoint of the forward and backward trajectories equal and summing over the, over it. It's just uh, it's just basic uh, expansion over the initial object. So I, 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 I for now I haven't done anything. Uh, in, in, just, in, like for now is I mean uh, it's just to to to, to catch up. It, yes. It's an expression, right? I mean it's yeah, exactly, exact. Exactly. It's a path integral, like one forward, one backward for the vectors and the dual vectors. But um, for now, I mean the, the meet will come in a second, right? Because for now it's yeah, still exactly. 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 For now I haven't done anything. I, I've just yeah, yeah. called. Uh, I, well, if you wish, I, I've done something. But which is going to be the subtle point. So I've just reversed the order of summation. So oh, yeah, yeah. Instead, of, instead of summing sequential in time, yeah, yeah, now yeah, I, have, yeah. I, have, I have kind of reversed the causality. So I, I have looked at the, at the full time evolution window. So from the beginning to the future, and I have summed over all the processes, possible processes happening in the environment. And that gives me some, some local weight acting on the system trajectories. Right, so that, that's that, but I, I, it's only mathematically, it's only a, an exchange of the order of summation in the path integral. That, that's all. I, that's all I did. Okay. Yeah, as you said, it's uh, for now. I haven't done really anything. Okay, so but let, let's let's look. Can I? Are you happy? Can I go on? Okay, I, I assume so. So okay, so let's let's look at this object to gain some some intuition what this is in general from this at least from this simple. Uh, what well, simple but not so simple example actually. So if, if you look at this uh, expression for the for the influence function, you see that. So imagine for a moment that the system S is linearly coupled to the environment E. Okay, so this this S uh, this interaction action is just some some linear coupling between the two. So you see you recognize that this summation, the the one in the bottom bottom row of the of the slide, is nothing but some kind of um, some kind of Fourier transform, right? So some kind of generating functional of the quantum noise exerted by the bath. So the influence functional doesn't know about the dynamics of the system. It only depends on the bath and how the bath is coupled uh, to the system. And it's some kind of generating functional of correlation functions, Keldish correlation functions of the, of the environment. So in if you're able to compute these correlation functions, you, you can compute this influence functional. And this results in, a, in an effective description of reduced description, open quantum system description of the evolution of the, of the system S. Okay, so that's that's what we want to do. Okay. And and okay, and let me stress another thing. So the, the, the crucial point that I think the, that this was the crucial co uh, conceptual idea of Feynman was that the only thing you need to know to evolve stuff in the system in S 
uh, about the environment is just its influence function. So possibly two extremely different uh, environments, maybe something that is one that is extremely large and extremely complicated, one that is extremely small and extremely simple, as long as they have the same influence functional, they are exactly the same for the purpose of evolving the system S. So the idea, the underlying idea in this game is trying to replace your infinite unitary environment with some kind of uh, smaller effective environment that produces the, that, that is very physically very different, but produces the same influence on the evolution of the system. If you manage to do so, you gain, you gain something, right? Because you, of course, you will never be able in this formalism to describe stuff happening in the environment. So no local in our many body setting, you will never be able to, to describe no local correlations, but that we don't care, right? So if, as long as you're only interested in describing local observables, then you gain from this, you potentially gain something. And that's, that's going to be the, the idea in the following. Can, can okay, I so ask maybe just a naive question? Please. Um, what's the difference between this and mm -hmm. approaches involving Markovian master equations? Uh, in principle, no, it's uh, Markovian, sorry. You said Markovian or non Markovian? Like, so when you trace these things out, is the environment Markovian or non Markovian? No, 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 no. In general, it's not Markovian. There's no reason why it should be Markovian in general. Okay, be. so you're including the memory effects. Yeah, yeah. This is, if you wish, this is I a see. way in the open quantum system framework, this is a way of exactly dealing with non Markovian. I see. Got it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. This Thank is you. the entire heart of it. I mean, you're really in the many body setting. So the subsystem is part of a many body setting. So the, the whole like memory thing is there is the the tricky part of the quantum anybody problem absolutely absolutely yes that's, that's, uh, that's the point so in general when i apply this to my say uniform extended lattice uh, evolving out of equilibrium this is in general expected to be uh, something something complicated so it, in general it's it, it will not be a limb blood uh, a limb blood equation but but i will come to that uh, that that's an important part of what, what follows so in general okay let me just stress this so in general this object this i of sigma sigma bar is no local in time it, it has some some memory, some some it couples uh, points of the trajectory of the system that that differs in time. Okay, and that's and that's the that's the part that we have to deal with. Okay, but let's but this is also true in this simpler uh, Caldera legged problem. So so let let me just give you some intuition on what, on what happens. Okay, so in, the simplest kind of uh, environment I can think of is is just a classical a classical noisy field acting on my, let, let's still consider this quantum spin interacting with some environment. So if the quantum spin is subject to some uh, classical field, which is, which is uh, governed by some, some noise, some noise kernel, which, which I describe as this kernel A of tau, tau, tau minus tau prime. So you can easily perform the integration over this, uh, the configurations of this environment, this noisy field, and you end up with some, with some influence function. So some, some additional weight uh, acting on the system trajectory, okay, sigma, sigma bar. And you will immediately see what, what happens. So imagine I performed it, okay, just, it, it's, it's an easy exercise, but just trust me on the result. If you perform this integration over the configurations of the noise, you, you end up with this influence function, which is, a, of course, quadratic because your environment is linearly coupled to, to your spin. And you see, you see that the, the form is very suggestive because this environment just penalizes trajectories that differ on the forward and backward. Uh, contour, right? So you see that this a, uh, this is exponential of minus a times the difference between sigma and sigma bar. So you see this, this, what this environment is trying to do to our system is just suppressing interference, suppressing uh, trajectories that off diagonal matrix elements in the reduced density matrix, if you wish. Okay, so that, that's that's the effect of a, of, a, of a, the simplest example. Sorry, the simplest environment you can conceive. As you see, in general, it's not local in time, right? Because it depends on this noise kernel. Now, a slightly more elaborate, uh, well, not slightly, a significantly more, more elaborate uh, kind of environment is a quantum environment made of, uh, but this, that is still quadratic, so made of some ensemble of thermal harmonic oscillators. This is precisely what um, the linear response environment that Feynman and Vernon introduced and that Leggett uh, uh, studied in this, uh, for this influence on quantum tunneling. So in this case, we can still perform the integration over the environment. It's it's a it's a more it's a more complicated calculation, but you, you can do this. So the, the our oscillator, our mode, bosonic modes of the environment are linearly coupled to our spin. If you if you do this exercise, you end up with a with a functional form that is still quadratic, and it, it you see that it has a, a, a part that re, that is reminiscent of the classical 
noise, so this a this a of uh, tau minus the bar, and it also has a part that is a phase, so it, this this in, incorporates the quant the quantumness if you wish of the of the environment. Okay, and understanding the, the dynamics of this uh, spin coupled to this environment, amount well all all you need to know is this uh, this influence function. So this will this is going to depend on the distribution of oscillator, so the, the so-called spectral density of your bath and, and your and the temperature of the bath and so on. This, this is precisely the content of this uh, legged uh, uh, review, which is which is very uh, a very serious piece of theoretical physics. So even if you know uh, this influence function, it's still generally tough to, to, to understand the dynamics of your system, at least analytically as they, as they want you to do. OK, so the purpose of this, uh, the, what, what, what's going what I'm going to present here is essentially we're trying to understand what kind of influence does an extended lattice interacting many body system acts on itself, so on its own parts, right? So remember, we're trying to understand when and how a system uh, behaves as a good thermal bath for itself. So this is the, the main idea of thermalization or failure of thermalization. So the, the program would be to understand the, the general structure of this object for a quantum many body system uh, acting on its own parts. Okay, and, and, and it seems it seems complicated, but I will show you that in some case you get you can get some mileage exploiting some some tricks essentially. Okay, so th this is the outline. So I'm going to I'm going to tell you how you can essentially apply these ideas in, in the context we're interested in. So in the context of the quantum anybody dynamics. And then I'm going to show you that uh, a crucial role in this game is played by the notion of temporal entanglement and which is associated with no Markovianity, so with memory, memory effects. Uh, happening in the environment. And then I will show you how you can use this temporal entanglement to, to understand, well, to classify and, and understand the dynamical phases of a system. So the, the, the essentially how a system, uh, dynamical properties of a system. So how how system uh, behave, uh, acts on itself and how, if, if and how, what, what kind of dynamical properties this produces. Okay, that's the problem, that's the program. Okay, so first first step, as I, as I told you, is essentially transforming this many body problem into some effective few body problem with some self interactions that are not local in time. That, that's that's the whole idea in in this in the simplest possible way. So we're gonna uh, essentially invent. If you, that, that's I want to stress this point because this is uh, this is really the the crucial point. So you, you ideally you want to invent the simplest possible environment which produces the same influence. As the original fully fully extended unitary uh, environment, right? If if you manage to do so, if this is possible, and if you if you can come up with a smart idea how to do this construction, then then you really get this uh, uh, you really get this uh, local time evolution with a with a say hopefully with a modest modest uh, computational effort. And on on the computational side and on the theory side, you can really understand what what makes a system a good thermal bath or a bad thermal bath. Okay, so how do you implement this in practice? Let me go back to the original, to the example I considered at the very beginning of the, of the presentation. So just this simple spin chain initialized in some simple and correlated state. We, we monitor its full-time evolution and we, mon we want to monitor a local region, which in this case I consider, I take for simplicity a single spin at position, at position P along the chain, okay? So what I want to do, I want to express the full evolution of this of this spin chain as a summation of our trajectories of the spin of all the spins so spin position p to the left of p or to the right of p and they want to perform the summation of all trajectories of the spins to the left and to the right of p and and then i end up with some with some functional of this trajectories of spin p okay and this is nothing but the feynman vernon influence functional applied to this uh, to this uh, context of uh, many body systems Okay. Oh, now, so in, are we still assuming linear coupling? No, 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 no. I, I, I don't want to do, make this assumption. Okay. Oh, so it's general. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. I don't want. That, that's the point. So, in case when your environment is quadratic, so it's some kind of harmonic oscillators. Okay. Then, then it's, uh, it's doable. No. So you, you can perform this integration, and you can end up with this, uh, with this object analytically, essentially. But yeah, here, I, I problem... wouldn't know what linear coupling means. I mean, it's a local Hamiltonian, right? So in the sense, it's only linear in the sense that 
I mean, well, it's, it's, no yeah, it's, it's not, it's not well defined because it, it's uh, the, there's no there's no al simple algebra in the so these are spins right so it's okay. uh, you see you in order to perform the integration you need that something is quadratic either in bosons or in fermions then then you can you have the Gaussian techniques right to to perform oh uh, so, okay right you're dealing with spins okay yeah, so in this case yeah if you wish no sure you're right it's it's linearly coupled somehow it's not weakly coupled but it's linearly coupled. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, but this doesn't doesn't give you an advantage in general because the, this, the, the environment is intrinsically nonlinear. It's made of spins, right? Right. I mean, it's not that these these kind of environments were not important in the context uh, of open quantum systems. It's just that this is uh, much more difficult to deal with, and people. So at least in in linear response, it makes sense in that context to to think of your bath as some kind of. A, uh, quadratic bath, right? Because if you weakly disturb your environment, then all that, all that matters is the, say, the lowest order perturbative response of the bath, which is always thinkable in terms of uh, some kind of harmonic oscillators. But 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 if you're if you're strongly coupled to some environment, and this environment is not uh, really quadratic, then then you you cannot do this assumption. Okay, so in this case, it's clearly we we want to be clearly in, in the situation where this is this is not possible, right? So this is not a bath of harmonic oscillators. So how how do you do it? It seems it seems like a crazy idea, but but you can you can make some progress uh, making the following observation essentially at least for this kind of one dimensional systems that I'm considering, exploiting translational invariance you can write some kind of exact self consistency equation for the influence function, which which the which is uh, has a very simple origin actually. So imagine I have computed the influence function acting on the spin at position p, so resulting from the summation. Over trajectories of spin to the left of spin p, okay, and that that's some kind of functional which is uh, in general uh, uh, difficult, right? But then imagine now I want to uh, include an extra spin into the environment, so I want to perform the summation over the trajectories of spin at position p, and I want to compute the new influence functional acting on the spin at, at the next position p plus one, okay? Now uh, the, the the by translational invariance the result of this operation should be exactly the same. As the as the previous influence function, okay, and and the act of performing this extra summation, you can view this as a, as some kind of linear operator acting on the, on the previous influence function, okay, because it's it's just acting linearly, okay. So this this will translate in, into some some uh, equation obeyed by your by your influence function, and then you can try to get some mileage on this problem by solving this equation, and this is what I'm going to describe. So to, to, to make this a bit more concrete, more practical, essentially you can write down for, a, for an arbitrary uh, one dimensional chain, you can write down, you can break down your time evolution, some kind of quantum circuit. Or well, this is, this is what you do all the time when you do tensor networks, right? So, so you, you think of your time evolution as a summation, well, you, you break down your time evolution operator as some, as some uh, sequence of gates, right? And, that, and then your path integral is nothing but the summation over all the intermediate indices, so the intermediate configurations of this tensor network. So for people doing tensor networks uh, among you, this is this is really what you do what you do all the time, I guess. Okay, so you, you end up with this kind of uh, trotterized path integral, which is um, which is a form of path integral that, that allows you to distinguish system and environment, and then to, to perform this this integration. Okay, so this is just a big tensor network for the for the time evolution of a of a wave function also, for example, of a pure state, of a factorized pure state as I'm considering here. Okay, and this, you can view this as some kind of Floquet, Floquet evolution where you alternate even an odd um, interaction. So here I'm, I'm assuming nearest neighbor interactions, it's not really crucial. So even for, for finite range interactions, this you can still do this game as, as you know. Okay, so you see that now the, the, what, what the, the program is the following. So we, we consider, Two, the two branches of time evolution, so two copies of this path integral uh, that I put on the foreground and on the background of this uh, drawing on the, on the bottom. And then I perform the trace over the environment. So I sum over the final state of all spins to the left and to the right of spin at position P, right? And then you see that this is the, the kind of uh, reversal of the order of summation I was hinting at before. So what, what you want to do now is instead of summing over these indices sequentially in time as you normally do for computing time evolutions. Now I want to take a different uh, viewpoint. I want to uh, essentially um, perform the summation sequentially in space, if you wish, right? 
So what, I, what I'm going to do, I'm going to somehow perform this contraction uh, in the space direction and end up with some big tensors that describe the influence of the left and right um, uh, environment. Can, can I ask a question now? It's interesting that you put up this reference because I mean, that, that's yes. the first association I had. Like that's kind of this um, contraction from the left and right instead of from the top and bottom, like this exactly. uh, common exactly. approach with Matt Hastings. But they also added this kind of folding trick that made a big mm -hmm. difference, right? Yes. Not yes, only exactly. the contraction from the left, Will you come to that, or is that? Um... Oh no, that's absolutely crucial. Actually, if you uh, if you start, so yeah, I was going to say that this this kind of uh, uh, approach of of uh, performing the contraction of the network sequentially space is something that people in tensor network community already knew, have, have already known for some years. Yeah, I mean, at least here, kind of, uh, uh, like in like um, I don't know, colloquial knowledge somehow. Um, exactly, exactly. But, but here is the, the, when when you take this. Um, I think what was missing is that when you take this open quantum system viewpoint, it's this folding is is very natural, right? Because it's it means that you're you're looking at time evolution. I I, I will I will exactly explain the point in a following slide. But but when it's, it it means you're looking at time evolution of the density matrix, right? And then it turns out that the structure of entanglement in this of this uh, tensor. Well, I'm coming to that actually. So maybe maybe it's better it's better to wait. Uh, Wonderful, thanks. So maybe okay. I was a bit. Uh, but this is no, no, it's, sorry. Uh, this is precisely the point. Yeah. Okay, yeah, no, this is a crucial point of what I'm what I'm going to say now. Okay, so this is uh, okay. So this trick of uh, say uh, trying to to contract the tensor network, the time evolution tensor network in this way was was already known somehow, and and but then then you realize that this this is um, this can be recognized as computing the influence functional of a many body system on itself. So the result of the summation is these two pink shaded uh, big tensors, right? W which live in the time domain instead of the space domain. So these are, these you, you should think of them as some kind of quantum st many body states in time rather than space, okay? And this, the, I want to stress this point. So this, okay, this is what we call influence matrices because they are kind, some kind of discretized versions of Feynman Vernon influence functionals. And this is, I want to stress the, the following point. So these two objects essentially know everything about the dynamics of, of local observables, okay? So whether your system is able to be a good thermal buffer itself or, is able, or, or loses local memory or preserves local memory forever and as in many body localized systems, it, it is all written in the structure of this, of this, of this tensor, of this object, which, which has the meaning of, a, of, a, of an influence function, right? Okay, so for example, imagine your system, your Polarization of spin p preserves memory of this polarization for arbitrarily long times, as as it happened in these ergodicity breaking uh, phases. Then this this trans will translate into some kind of long range order in this object. So you see, we're trying to learn something about quantum many body dynamics, looking at the structure of this object and how how it is simple to compress, and, and so on. So the, the, we're trying to essentially uh, Use this physical intuition coming from open quantum systems to 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 get some understanding of quantum many body dynamics. Okay, and the exact self consistency equation I was mentioning before takes the following form. So you see, it's it's it it uh, describes the act of including an extra portion of the system into the environment, and this should spit out the same the same environment as before, the same influence function. Okay, but this uh, act of summing over another portion of the system, so another trajectories of the spins, you see it takes the form of acting with some kind of um, transfer matrix acting on the previous influence function. This results in the new influence function. And then you ask that these two things are the same. So this translates into some eigenvector equation for, the, for, this, um, for this object, okay? And then if you, if you decompose this eigenvector on the, on the computational basis of trajectories of your local spin, the components of, on this basis has the, has the physical meaning of influence function, okay? So you see that th this is nice, I think, because this, this means essentially, so if we go back to, sol to what it means to solve an equilibrium problem, this is nothing but finding the leading lead lead eigenvector of some matrix with a local structure, which is the Hamiltonian, right? So in this case, we have reformulated the non-equilibrium problem, uh, essentially as, as the, an eigenvector problem for some kind of transfer matrix with a local structure, okay? So it's, it's kind of a reminiscent, uh, uh, reminiscent structure that, that, that you can trace down to some, some kind of space-time duality, essentially. And you see, this is, this is nice because now knowing, so just like knowing the properties of the ground state gives you everything about equilibrium 
state. So you, it allows you to classify, for example, uh, phases of matter and so on. So now, if knowing the properties of this, this influence function allows you somehow, th that's the underlying idea. So it allows to classify dynamical phases of matter. So it tells you if your system is, is thermalizing, if it fails to thermalize and so on. Okay, so that, that's what we, where we want to go. And, and now at least you have a formulation. Um, sorry, this just reminds me of like, uh, you know, in classical dynamical system, you have this Lapinov exponent, but you only also get this from solving an eigensystem. You get the mm -hmm. eigenvalues and you see how, you know, there are different ways of attractors yeah. and, you know, that's... Uh, yeah, you can, view, you can view this as an analogy in some vague sense, yes. Uh, I don't know. Do you want to say something more? No, I was just, I just, it just reminds me of that question. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, I agree. It's, um, I mean, here locality is crucial, though. Uh, it's, it's not, we're not considering all degrees of freedom as you do in classical, uh, in, in this classical uh, problem that you're mentioning, but we we're just looking at uh, evolution of a local or certain selected degrees of freedom. Okay, so. Now, I want to convince you that, okay, this is nice reformulation, but it could be completely useless, right? Uh, actually, we know it's not useless because uh, this, this uh, previous work on Tensor Network already noted that this, this gives you an advantage. So th that there was, as uh, Jens uh, noted, so if you do it in the proper way, so this, this folding trick that they introduced, you realize that there is, there is something nice about this, right? So it, it wasn't, I don't think it was fully clear before, but um, that there, there is something nicer happening when, when you when you look at the problem in this way. Now, as I, I, I convinced you that now if you if you can solve this dual problem, that this dual eigenvector problem, this is like solving an equilibrium problem because it, it, at least at least if you're interested in dynamics of local uh, observables, that, that it gives you essentially everything. Right. Now I want to convince you that this is this makes sense. Right? This is um, uh, a good idea. And and the, the reason why this is a good idea is that the structure of temporal correlations encoded by this uh, influence functional is nicer than the structure of spatial correlations encoded in the in the many body wave function okay so we know we know for a fact that the in most systems the structure of uh, of, of spatial correlations in the time evolved the state is just a mess it's just something extremely complicated and and uh, the, the the interesting information is hidden is hidden in this uh, in this object now Imagine, for example, for a moment that your system is, is a strongly thermalizing system. So it, it wants to rapidly forget the initial condition and, and converge to converge local observables to some, some equilibrium state that, that, that has forgotten everything about the initial state except the few conservation laws that you have, right? So if this is, if this is the case, it means that these pink objects, this, these influence functionals, have to be short range correlated somehow. No? So I have to, have to be able to disconnect your the bottom part of your of your spin, so the, the the initial state from what happens at later times. Okay, so if if this is the intuition, so if this if this is a good idea, so if this if these co correlations are really short ranged, then it means that this object is better behaved than the than the many body wave function, and and possibly, and and I, I, I try to convince you that this object is, is exactly the object that describes is exactly the minimal information you need to describe. The local, the local evolution, right? No, so, no I mean to, to to be entirely clear about this. I mean, this is like super intuitive and it's extremely plausible. And of course, you would mm -hmm. um, expect like relatively small temporal correlations in the way you've described. I mm -hmm. mean, I think the I mean the, the the tricky with all of this is like to what extent one wants a promise that this is kind of what happens, right? So that in that in 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 the sense one kind of assumes like a small bond dimension or something, or mm -hmm. in what sense you can kind of certify this in retrospect that this is really what's happening. And that there's not something kind of going somewhere and coming back and like surprises you that there is more correlation and more memory mm -hmm. happening than one would have thought. But yes, it's completely brutally plausible. And, and yeah, that's yeah, yeah I, I agree. I agree. So and the, the frustrating aspect of this is that for now, unlike, uh, say, the many body wave function where we, we know we know very well what's happening and we know what to expect on, for example, the growth of an entanglement and so on for a genetic system. In this case, we still miss, well, this is much newer, I would say. So we still miss an argument that says for a generic system, this is the behavior, this is the scaling, this and so on. But I, well, by now we have accumulated several examples that show the plausibility of this, this thing. And this is what I'm going to present now. So there, there are several systems that are non-trivial 
for which this this thing can be can be actually shown the the, the fact that the you need low low amount of resources if you wish to to incorporate this uh, to compress this this object okay so let me go there okay so first of all the simplest uh, the simplest kind of uh, bath you can consider is just a bath that fully uh, measures your spin right so it fully it has the strongest possible action on your local on your local subregion and this in particular is some kind of markovian markovian action right so it's it's just uh, yeah exactly so mathematically this takes the form of a product state in time of some delta functions which enforces uh, enforces the state uh, the um, trajectory of your, of your spin on the forward and backward branch to be equal at all times right so if you if you remember the initial example of this uh, classical noisy system this would be correspond to the when the noise is uh, full is very strong right this completely suppresses interference in, in, the, in the evolution of your spin and that that's precisely the, this ansatz that i'm making of course this sounds very unrealistic because i mean in general a many body system will be a complicated bath right we, we expect that it will have memory it will, it, it will not be such a simple bath but now what came a bit as a surprise is that actually there are there exist non-trivial many body systems, uh, so non-trivial spin chains, if you wish, that realize precisely this, this kind of influence on their own, on their own parts, right? And um, yeah, so in particular, the, there is this family. So what, what, I, what I mean by non-trivial is the following, I, is that the, the systems are, or at least can be quantum chaotic in a precise sense. So for, for example, let me consider this kick this in chain, okay? So we have some nearest neighbor uh, easing interactions and some kick acting periodically on your spins that periodically. So this is a Floquet, a Floquet model. And this, this kick acts on some arbitrary, around some arbitrary, is a rotation around some arbitrary axis. So th this is a prototypical non-integrable uh, system. It's, it's, it's actually known to be quantum chaotic. This was uh, introduced by Prozen, I think, so a few, few years back. And, and it's, it's basically one of the standard models of, uh, you know, of ETH for Floquet, for Floquet systems. And actually recently, um, a group of pros and proved actually for for this model tuned to some specific parameters that, that that will play a role now that this that this model actually has a spectrum form factor that obeys exactly the prediction of uh, of random matrix uh, theory right so it's it's really in in a sense this model is kind of maximally chaotic so it's non integrable and maximally chaotic and that's now, a really a striking result i should say i mean that's really amazing absolutely, absolutely absolutely yes yes because you know normally for a, for a system normally you would expect some some tablet time right? so some some non 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 universal transient over which the system does what it does and then only at later time some some kind of universal universality emerges right now these systems are really special because uh, of course, they are fine-tuned, but if you fine-tune the model to this kind of parameters, th this kind of transient just shrinks to zero, and you, you have perfect uh, agreement with the random matrix, random matrix theory predictions on level statistics from, from time zero, so without, uh, without any non-universal time scale. Okay, even though these systems are fully deterministic, so there is no, there is no, um, there's no randomness in the system, right? So, but, but strikingly, as you said, this reproduces random matrix uh, uh, results. Okay, now the, the, the way the, spe the specialness of these systems arises in, in this influence functional context is the following. So if you tune your model parameters to be this, so to, in particular the, the interaction to be this uh, value pi fourth, and the kick, the transverse kick to be pi fourth, and your longitudinal kick can be anything, right? So it's an integrable. If, if, you, if you don't have your longitudinal field, that, that's just an integrable free fermion chain. But if you have a longitudinal field, this is a very complicated non-integrable model. Now it turns out that for this choice of parameters, the, the, the influence function that I wrote above, so the simplest possible influence function you can imagine, just solves the self-consistency equation. So you can just plug it and you see that this, uh, this solves the, the equation, which means that these systems, the, the, the maximally, maximal chaoticity of these systems arises in this influence functional context as some, some kind of, uh, as the fact that these systems act as some perfect Markovian buff on themselves, which is really striking, right? Because normally Markovian approximation arises when the buff is fast compared to the system and when it's weakly coupled and so on. Right? So the usual things that we learned from, from open quantum system theory. But here there is nothing like that. It's just a homogeneous, uh, strongly interacting spin chain, which acts as a perfect buff, as a perfect defacing buff on its own parts. Okay. 
Now, of course, this is really fine tuned. It's it's not expected to be to be the generic behavior of a chaotic of a thermalizing system, but it, it, it's very nice because it gives us some hints. You know? So if we look at this tensor uh, tensor picture for this uh, perfect dephasing bath, so I'm referring to the top the top uh, illustration. You see that what what, what this influence function does is, is that it creates a strong perfect correlation between equal time uh, values of the of the trajectory on forward and backward uh, part. So it forces the forward and backward trajectory to be equal, killing interference at all times, right? So you see that the entanglement pattern of this, of this object is really between the branches and not, and not uh, between times. And that, that, that's the crucial. This is why this folding idea that, that Jens was uh, mentioning before, uh, it, it was really was really a good idea, right? Because okay, this is again, this is an extreme case where the only correlations in the influence function are between the branches. Normally, we also have some correlations between times, so some non-locality in time, which reflects no Markovianity memory and so on. But but the strongest correlations uh, for a thermalizing system act in this way, so acting in the sense of having the system forget, right? So this this is just the the fact that the, the buff is trying to kill interference in the system. Okay. And, and, and so this, this is very nice because it, it's, it's a solvable uh, chaotic model, which gives us some intuition of what's, what's going on for a generic, for a generic thermalizing chaotic systems. Okay. So you see, for, that's the intuition. So for a general thermalizing system, we expect that there will be some memory time. So there will be some, some temporal correlations uh, between different times. So this object will not be a perfect product state as for Markovian, for Markovian buffs, but maybe it's it's still representable with a with a with a with a low bond dimension essentially, right? So what captures these properties is the so-called what we call temporal entanglement. So the entanglement of this uh, quantum state in time viewed as a fictitious wave function. Okay. Right, so that's that's the catch. So in general, so in, in case your system has a short range non Markovian memory, you are you expect that this is this, its influence function, which is all you need to describe local observables, is captured by some some reasonable MPS. Okay. Good. So that's okay. That's just repeating. So it's just a different principle of, of efficiency compared to usual tensor network methods, for example, now where you. You, you, you try to describe your time evolved state with a, a finite bond dimension, but that's uh, that's known to be hard. But now maybe this trying to describe an influence function with a low bond dimension, maybe it's a better idea. And again, uh, this was already noted by Marie Carmen and so on, that, that, uh, you know, playing just this as a mathematical trick, this, this gives you some advantage. Okay, so for example, an interesting idea is, can, can we have an area law for influence function or can we classify systems such that the, the eigenvector of their transfer matrix has, a, has an eigenstate as an eigenvector, so as an influence functional that has a, an area law temporal entanglement, right? So th this is kind of the dual of the problem of, of the area law for, um, for ground states, right? which is much more understood. Okay, and now I want to talk about something very, very important. So the, 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 essentially the meaning of this MPS representation, which I think is a crucial point. So, and this goes back to the, to, to, the, um, to the idea of Feynman that I said before. So imagine now we have an infinite chain and we want to represent it essentially, we want, so th this is an infinite unitary bath, but the idea of Feynman is that, okay, just you don't really have to describe the time evolution of the system and plus environment state, we don't care, okay? We only care about the influence function of the environment on the system. So if you can substitute your environment with a simpler environment that has the same influence on the system, you win, right? Okay, so in the in the case of perfect dephasor, this is clearly an extreme advantage, right? So I can forget about my full chaotic uh, uh, spin chain. I can just put a Markovian dephasing, and that's the same for the viewpoint of evolution of local observables. This is exactly the same. Now, in general, we we will not be able to do this in an exact uh, way, but what we can hope for is to describe to substitute our infinite number of qubits. Or, or, or qubits in the, in, the, in the environment with some kind of finite environment, right? With some, uh, with some dissipation, right? And this, so this dissipation essentially models uh, the amount of information that, we, that the system puts in the bath and it will never come back to the system before time t. Okay, that, that's, that's the idea. So 
essentially the, 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 the influence functional approach tries to optimize the, the amount of memory that you need to carry through from time zero to time t, okay? Because it knows everything about the full time window, right? So we, we don't, uh, so I want to stress this point. So normally when we go from time t to time t plus one, right? We, we, we decide what to truncate, right? So we, we, we update the state and then we decide, okay, the, we try to forget about non-local information because that's, uh, that's less relevant and so on. But we have to decide on the spot at time t. But here, the, the, the compression, imagine you're trying to compress your infinite tensor network, right? So this compression algorithm know, knows everything about the full time window from time zero to time t. So in principle, it knows what part of quantum information will be will come back to the system at time t and what part will be traced out in the environment and, and can just be dropped before time t. Okay, that's the idea. So this, this in principle, this should give you the least, the, the, the minimal amount of information you need to describe the evolution of the, of the, of the system S. And, and the, the physical meaning of this bond dimension is nothing but the physical dimension of this compressed environment. So we have to invent another environment that lives in this virtual space of dimension chi which coupled, uh, coupled to the system with some, you know, some, some, uh, some map, uh, this gives the same evolution of, of the original infinite unitary bar. Sorry, I'm being a bit repetitive on this point, but I, I think it's really the, so from, from a quantum information viewpoint, I think it's really the, the crucial point. Okay, so you see that now, once, once we, imagine we have come up with a smart uh, compression algorithm with some smart idea how to do, how to do this construction. So how to substitute our original system with this MPS. Okay, then we can perform time evolution of system S in an exact uh, way. No? So we, we can define an exact, an effective time evolution super operator, which acts on the system and on this uh, auxiliary chi dimensional spaces, on, uh, fictitious environments, if you wish, right? And this, this time evolution operator gives you a nearly, nearly exact evolution of the system, not of the environment. So we have lost forever the possibility of describing stuff happening in the real environment because we have integrated out the environment. But, but this is supposed to give you the exact, exact or nearly exact evolution of the, of the subsystem. Okay, that's, that's the conceptual part. And, and then what, 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 what do we hope to, to get from this? Okay, on one side, from theory side, we go, as I mentioned before, we hope to get uh, the fact that the structure of this object allows you to understand the physical, pro the dynamical properties of the system, like th things like thermalization or many body localization and so on. On the other hand, we, uh, we hope to get also computational advantage from this kind of uh, way of, um, of, of thinking about um, quantum many body dynamics. Okay, so how much time do I have now? Um, it's already been one hour, so... Okay. Okay, if, so maybe I can just kind of wrap up. I don't know if you the time if you are, for questions would be nice. Sorry, say, say it again. If if you if you can wrap up and leave some time for questions, that'd be nice. Okay, okay, I can just maybe flash the this um, practical examples essentially of um, of systems where you can really see that temp this temporal entanglement is low. Okay, so maybe I think it's uh, maybe interesting to know. Uh, okay, so one, one example is maybe the simplest example is just a system where, that is mappable to some free fermionic uh, chain. Okay, so, so for example, the kick in chain for, for vanishing interaction, for vanishing uh, longitudinal kick. Okay, in this case, it's, the environment is mappable to some quadratic fermionic um, environments. And with some, with some effort, you can do this, uh, the computation of the influence function, and you get some, some quadratic... Uh, some, some Gaussian state, okay? So in, in particular in this, for this uh, kick in chain, so for this fermionic chain, you get some, some functional of this form, as you see, so some kind of BCS wave function in the time domain, okay? And, and the amount of temporal correlations is controlled by this function kappa, which is nothing but some kind of um, Fourier transform of the spectral density. So, okay, if you, if, you do, if you do it properly, you find the following, you find that when your environment is, is gapped or finite temperature or out of equilibrium, you get this universal uh, be, uh, behavior of this function. So some, some power low decay with a, with a fast enough power, okay? And that, that this, this, well, I, I will come there. Well, if your environment is critical, so it's zero temperature and gapless, you get some one over, one over T correlation, which, re, which is reminiscent of the one over X correlations that you have in the, 
in the initial state in the Fermi C. So there is some kind of space time uh, mapping in this case. Okay, and this, this is nice because this gives you that really tells you that unlike the wave function, this, this object is really quasi local. It's quasi local in, uh, again, so this is not the initial state. This is really something that describes dynamics, right? So this object is an area law state in this case. So you can prove, actually, in this case, you can really prove it. Um, that the that the in the first case for, for non-critical environments uh, you get an area law a temporal area law for these influence functions, and while for a critical environment you get some logarithmic uh, logarithmic temporal entanglement which is closely related. Actually, you can map it uh, with some conformal field theory argument. You can map it to the logarithmic uh, scaling of the initial state. Okay, now this is this is nice. I, I want to stress this. So this is. It could be that your environment is uh, is uh, made of free particles, but your problem is still highly non-trivial. Think about, for example, the condo condo model, right? So you, if you have an interacting impurity, this 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 approach essentially allows you to simplify the description of the environment, so in, incorporate it with some some MPS, right? Because because of the this scaling this, this favorable scaling of temporal entanglements, and then you can imagine to describe the evolution of your impurities, which is what you need in several problems in condensed matter physics, for example. OK, so you see this This is provably efficient in this case for no Markovian dynamics of systems coupled to some, some, uh, some quadratic environments. OK, let me skip this. OK, well, it turns out that this also characterizes uh, phase transition. So if you have a phase transition, uh, for example, when, when some edge modes arises, this shows up in the, in the structure of the influence function and in the structure of uh, of temporal entanglement, which is I find remarkable because the influence function is a bulk property of the system, but turns out to be sensitive to edge physics, to edge modes. But okay, I don't have time to go in, into that, this, although it's interesting. Now, in, uh, um, a less trivial, uh, a less uh, simple example is that of um, when you have interactions in the in the system, but these interactions preserve the stability of quasi particles. So this integrable interaction models. Now, in this case, there are couple of examples that are really uh, nice. Well, the simplest one is pro pro possibly this rule 54 quantum cellular automaton where other people, so Katia Klobas, uh, Bruno Bertini, and Lorenzo Piroli, they found that this object, this influence functional in the time domain can be described with an exact matrix polar state that is non-Markovian. So unlike the, the dual unitary, so the perfect phasor model, which, is, which has a, an exact Markovian behavior, in this case, you have an exact MPS influence function, which is non-trivial with one dimension three in this case. And okay, it's, it's a simple model, but this is, this is nice because it, it, it gives you that, it tells you that you can solve a quantum anybody system uh, using, using this idea essentially. Now, another, another interesting model is the so-called Floquet XXZ model. So the Trotterized XXZ model. This is what we studied uh, uh, more recently, also in collaboration with uh, Giacomo Giudice, uh, Giuliano Giudice, and Lorenzo Piroli. And essentially here, at least in one, in one, for one choice of parameters, you can prove that your influence function can be represented with an exact MPS. In this case, the, due to the interactions, well, for most choices of the interaction, the, the MPS needs a, linear, a linearly growing bond dimension. So it, it's still much lower than the expect, well, the maximum, say, exponential exponential amount of uh, resources that you need to describe uh, to describe an arbitrary quantum state right so in this case this is can really be proven and then if you detune away from this uh, point so if you go to a generic choice of parameters in this xxz choice of xxz model you find you still find this logarithmic well numerically we find we find some a behavior that is compatible with this uh, logarithmic uh, scaling of entanglement both for pure state or for for pure state initial conditions or for some mixed state initial conditions. And so we conjecture that this is uh, actually generic for, for interacting integrable models. OK, and finally, you can uh, study a fully non-integrable model say, that has no, no conservation laws whatsoever. In this case, for example, taking this kick in chain and cranking up uh, the integrability breaking parameters, so the longitudinal component of the kick, uh, then you realize essentially that um, so it, this, this is, uh, turns out to be dependent on the physics of the problem. So if you do it in the, in the paramagnetic phase, you see that the temporal entanglement seems to, to, to also saturate when, when in the presence of a sizable integrability breaking. And this is uh, for, for choice of parameters A and B in this, in this plot. 
And now if you go to the throttle limit in this case, you will see that this, this behaves as, as a non-integrable model should, should behave. So you see some emergence of some diffusion. But now, I, this is my conclusion, if you instead go to the, to the other phase, so the ferromagnetic phase, here the physics turns out to be more intricate. So the, the intrinsic physics of the problem is more intricate due to some slow dynamics emerging due to this domain world confinement. And in this case, you see, due, since the system preserves more memory of the initial condition, it makes, makes a lot of sense that temporal entanglement grows, grows more, grows faster in this case, right? So you, 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 we observe some growth. We don't know if, if this is the asymptotic behavior or, or, or if it's just uh, a higher, a slow saturation to some higher values. This, this we don't know for the moment. And in this case, you see, we see deviation from diffusion. So we see either subdiffusion or complete suppression of transport uh, if we go to the trotter limit where energy is conserved. Okay, I think I'm done. I can leave you with this. So some, some open challenges on, on this temporal entanglement um, um, behavior, behavior that turns out to be the crucial, one of the crucial things to understand in this game of approaching quantum anybody dynamics using influence functions. Okay, I, I think I can stop here. Sorry for being a bit over time. Wonderful. Thank you so Fantastic. much, Alessio, for a wonderful talk. Um, we've learned a lot, and uh, it's time for questions. Um, no, that's absolutely wonderful. I I, I love it. I mean, as, as I well, that's um, it, it scoops a bit of an effort in in, in the group in a way, but in, in a good way. It's uh, super highly interesting. Um, but um, like. Is, is it fair to say that, um, I mean, there's the, the whole influence functional picture is like more like a, a picture because at the end of the day, what they are doing is rather like looking at, at bond dimensions of effectual temporal correlations in the environment, right? So that's more like a metaphor than an actual approach that you actually- um, I, 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 I'd like to think of it as more than a metaphor in the following sense. So it's true that for now, uh, we, we the, the, what we are doing now is, yeah, we're trying to compress the environment with conventional, Tensor network approaches, like well, yeah. essentially singular value decomposition. This yeah, yeah, indeed. Now, I, there's something I haven't told you about because, yeah, for a reason, for time limitation. But okay. essentially, it turns out that this um, older idea of iterating dual uh, transfer matrix to construct that's that's actually turns out to be a bad idea to con to do this construction. It's it's known that um, well, okay, it has some problems that I have no time to enter. But we have come up with a smarter algorithm how to actually us and uh, Marie Carmen and his, uh, her student almost contem almost simultaneously came up with uh, this idea of performing this light con contraction that that turns out to avoid precisely this uh, barrier this temporal entanglement barrier problem so okay so it, uh, this is just to say that using this intuition from open quantum systems it, it suggests you uh, ways of doing this uh, this kind of uh, approaches in a in a smarter way that's one point but the second point more interesting i think maybe this is something that interests your you and your group more is the following so now it's true that we, what we are doing so, so far in the lack of a better idea is to do this compression in this way you know, in the with usual conventional tensor network uh, approaches that's actually not ideal for the following for the following reason because if we want to imagine you want to compress your your bath as an mps right in the in this in this influence functional sense but now you want your bath to be to preserve the, the physical properties of a bath meaning it preserves complete positive well sorry it preserves positivity of the density matrix of your local, sure. I'm with you. right? So okay. it gives us a channel properly. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. It defines a proper multi-time channel. If you will. if you want, an influence function is nothing but a word for a multi-time channel in in this in this uh, discretized uh, way of yeah looking. yeah yeah. Okay, but now you you see you want to do this compression preserving this this property. So you want to preserve this uh, the property that individual tensors are are nothing but as I mentioned before are really uh, some CPTP maps if you wish of system plus fictitious environment okay so you have to come up with a smarter idea of doing of doing the compression preserving this property and if you manage to do so it's it's likely that this this will really uh give you a you know a, a much better advantage because we observe also in, in this that when you when you fail when when your bond dimension is not enough well of course when your bond dimension is large enough then you capture approximately your your exact uh, influence function and that that's that's good i mean the, the description of local observables is good but when you start um say um deviating from this then then it, it, this this can be bad right but i what i expect is that if you manage to do this compression in a smarter way encapsulating this physical property in the tensors 
then this is possibly something that remains good even at, at larger times. Right. So yeah, in, in okay. this sense, yeah, yeah. It, it, I view it as more than that, as more than just. Okay, uh, I'm I'm totally with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I see that, of course. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's 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 a slightly different intuition, but I, I, I share. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Oh, thank you. Okay. We have other other questions. Um, could you get back to the CFT slide? Uh, yeah. So yeah, okay. With the lock scaling, mm -hmm. uh, what determines the central charge here? Oh, the central charge of the environment. This is a critical environment, right? So it's oh, okay. Uh, okay, this is something I didn't have time to mention. That what what currently our greatest efforts are in studying this uh, interacting impurity problems. Like imagine this uh, single impurity under some model or condo problem. These kind of things. Um, and right, and the, the, this is these are the interesting regime for these problems is where you embed an interacting impurity. Uh, you turn on an interacting impurity in a critical environment, so in a Fermi C or something like that. Okay, then the, the environment is critical in a precise way and has some in, in the one dimension. So in this case, it's it has a, it, it described as some exact um, central charge, which which is the precisely the C, the value of C that enters in the scaling of temporal entanglement. Okay, that makes sense. So I, I don't have a slide specifically on that, but yeah, it, it, our most recent paper has a. I mean, you you would find this the CFT argument on why why the scaling of temporal entanglement is is closely related to the scaling of spatial entanglement in the initial state. Okay, Thank it's a, yeah, it's really a CFT, a CFT argument. And, you know, you have to transport the correlations from from a time slice to a space slice using CFT. Uh, perhaps related to that, uh, is there any connection with uh, this notion of operator entanglement? If I'm not uh, wrong, I think it follows the same scaling with time. Like for free systems, you can have at most uh, polynomial, uh, polynomial, and in non-integrable systems, you expect logarithmic scaling if i remember rightly interactive interval yeah there are some analogies yeah, yeah i agree but it's, it's not a, i don't think it's a full it's a full analogy so there are counter examples for example well for example this uh, perfect dephasor case this dual unitary circuits uh, the, the evolution well the operator space entanglement grows uh, is still exponentially complex while the influence functional is, is just a product state at least for a for a class of initial states it is a product state um, also, in the XXZ case that we studied with Lorenzo, uh, the, the, the influence function has logarithmic scaling of temporal entanglement, while the operator, for that very model, the operator spreading, uh, the operator entanglement has been studied by uh, Bruno Bertini, I mean, uh, by Bruno, um, Pavel Kos, and Prozen, and there they find error law. Mm -hmm. So they find the saturation. So you no, see, it, yeah, yeah. it's not always the same thing. Uh, but but yeah, I agree that they, they seem somehow vaguely connected, but uh, we don't have a precise mapping, say, a uh, precise uh, bridge between the two. But speaking of precise bridges and, and mapping, I mean, we have the log scaling on the right hand side. I mean, that's basically just saying that um, that, uh, C, that that is a CFT and that you have like uh, uh, the appropriate correlations both in space and time. Right, so that's in a way, yes. In a way, yes. Okay. Yes, I think you can ultimately break it down to that. Yes. Yeah, and there was a, this comment on this um, thinking with Isaac. I mean, that's basically talking about the tails and distributions that like trace norms can be too brutal, and then it makes sense to look at other norms that accommodate tails better. Right? Is this uh, sorry, point? What are you yeah, yeah. This point of of, of truncation of small single values can be harmful, and so on. So. Um, yeah. Okay. So we're basically yeah, saying that you me. should be better behaving behaved with um, with tails of distributions, 